Welcome to our annual poetry contest, Virtual Reading. I'm Meg Miller, an adult services librarian for Pflugerville Public Library. For the last several years, we have asked local poets to submit their original work to be entered for one of three prizes, and then hosted a poetry reading in April. This opportunity would not be possible without the support of the Friends of the Pflugerville Library Group, who provide for the prizes of gift cards to half-price books. I would also like to thank our trio of judges for agreeing to make some tough choices. 2021 marks the 25th anniversary celebration of National Poetry Month. And as you listen to this year's amazing poets, I'm sure you'll see why this form of literature continues to be celebrated. We are excited to highlight the following local poets virtually and hope you enjoy this reading. To begin, I'm happy to announce the first place poem is, I'm Beginning to Think There's No Such Thing as Extroverts by Raquel. I'm beginning to think there's no such thing as extroverts. As a 365-day shaped circle closes on an increasingly inundated and isolated human population, we see agitations increase and human interactions harder with prosthetic phones. Conversations on Facebook are two-faced, binary, and I can't speak with strangers about Gray things. Gray is the natural born color of 2020. It's an unlovable prison color. The color of our concrete cities and unending winter days where sad devalues our values. Yet, gray has taken front stage. The carpet is gray. The walls are gray. Your eyes are gray. My blood is gray perilous gray, ambivalent gray, grayish, the color of our home, built during COVID gray. Time seems close and far away, yet again, quite gray. I can't think of anything good to say about gray, except that gray is an obligatory salute to clearer days. It's something of a pause for prayer Meditation, whoever prays these days. I say then, extroverts don't exist. If they did, they're extinct now. Call it extreme, but it would seem a pandemic would eradicate any remaining social humans. Or perhaps extroversion is a situational matter, and one is only an extrovert in the presence of others and is otherwise introverted on a spectrum of colors. Rather gray, you might say. By Raquel Medora Phillips. The second place poem this year is Seclusion, A Night on the COVID Unit by Margaret. Seclusion on the COVID Unit. A breath, a word, released into the ether, used to be the way we claim our space, move around in the world and seek our place with people. Now, like a thief in the night, like a farmer mowing down a field, a breath, a word, a hug, can leave a field of destruction behind to a stranger or loved one. I move with protective gear into a space that takes my breath away and causes physical pain when I attend to my patient who is in anguish and fear. I am shouting and yelling words of comfort and calming that he can hear sometimes through this barrier. We are asked against our human nature not to touch, stay apart, keep distance, stay in seclusion, live in a confined place. Seclusion into ourselves, our thoughts and bodies, like going back into a cocoon. Vulnerability and insecurity about the daily tomorrow are physically hijacking our dreams. No sounds of musicians that carry our bodies away in the dance of sounds and movement of just carefree living. Who do we meet in this inner seclusion? Our past, our present, our future, a stranger, a friend, an ally, an enemy, a new possibility, a new self. 
What voices do we listen to? Inside and outside of us. The outer mask we wear now is the mask that forces us to unmask ourselves, deconstruct, reconstruct and redefine how we truly want to show up in the world and relate. This outer mask against the virus that we wear for hours will leave an imprint on our skin, heart and soul, manifested as a wrinkle or even a scar or a wound as a reminder of this time that we lived through, individually and collectively. Dawn comes after a long shift on the COVID unit. Removing this layer of clothing and being and stepping outside into the morning sun and another reality of being. And in third place, we have 13 Ways of Looking at a River by Agnes. 13 Ways of Looking at a River. 1. New watercolors, the first drop that starts a river. 2. A circle of river stones, one leaf caught in the eddy. 3. Flowing water, each skipping stone changes it. 4. Into my search for a poem in the river, a dog's nose. 5. Campsite, whispering between fire and river. 6. Shimmering river, I squint my eyes and kayak through diamonds. 7. High summer, the icy river we don't swim in. 8. October morning, each rock holds the river back a little. 9. A yellow leaf sails downstream, carrying time. 10. A ripple carried past a bend in the river, her baby's ashes. 11. Rainy bridge, the river flowing faster. 12. A blackbird flies, the river must be moving. 13. Rivers rush, a feather quickens around a rock. Congratulations to the winners. Now we continue with more poetry from the other entries in this year's contest and a few bonus poems. You'll notice quite a few amazing haikus that were also part of our Share a Haiku event in February for National Haiku Writing Month. Pflugerville, Texas, a stone's throw north of the weird and loaded with fun by Angie Hintz. I am a teacher. It is what I do and love. Teaching requires heart. Your paws, your cold nose, your soft tan fur, your love unconditional. Hello, my name is Amira and this is my haiku. Fireflies dance, purple clouds promise, thunderstorms. Thank you. Spring is coming. Blue flowers are blooming. Looks like they are dancing. Sun shines through the clouds, illuminating the dark. Hope is like the dawn. Hi, my name is Courtney, and today I will be reading you my haiku. Empty womb, sweet chirping song, spirit outside my window. Haiku. As the bloom fades, my old body queries. Does the flower reminisce? Motherhood river never stops, only slows fades into sunset. Shooting Star by Brenda O'Sale. Bright flash streaking by, shooting star lights up the sky, night's special rainbow. Texas Blue Bonnets by Brenda O'Sale. A pride of Texas blooming across our great state. Blue Bonnets are here. Hello, this is a collection of haiku entitled Migrants. My name is Shelly Barber. A photo of me mama working in fields of cotton, a child five years old. A decrepit shack, a farm seasonal way station. My family sleeps. The family Bible with intricately carved roses the Abuela's gravestone. Hello, my name is Jim Parker and this is my submission for the 2021 Pflugerville Library's Poetry Contest and it is entitled Angel on the Third Floor. 
This was written for Nicole, and it is dedicated to my sweet, uh, my, my sweet wife who has passed on since, Anne Marie Parker. Angel on the third floor. A new building, a short elevator ride, another waiting room, and her favorite TV channel. A good sign, maybe? Not long after, we make our way into the infusion room for the first time. We see a bell waiting to be rung, a promise of hope down a long and unfamiliar road. A warm, busy energy fills the room. A volunteer welcomes us. First time, she asks. We are that obvious, and everything feels so foreign. How did we know to choose your chair? That you, Nicole, would be our angel of choice. The one we needed to know before we knew what we needed to know. We had questions. You had answers. We had fear. You had comforting words. We had an anxious impatience. You had a calming energy. We wanted hard truths. You offered nothing less. Every time you asked for date of birth, I realized you were asking for proof of identity, but also affirming proof of existence, as if to lean in and whisper into each patient's ear against striking odds. You are still here. Time shifts into new reality and nothing exists outside of this room. Hours fade into bags and beeps and another game of canasta and everything feels so familiar. And just try to get your attention while with another patient. For each person here on this third floor gets all of you for the hours you are here just as we get all of you for the hours that we are here. This is not a job, not a paycheck, but a calling. A nurse is just a small container. Caregiver, lifesaver, truth-sayer, soul-soother, friend. Chocolate lover, love-bringer, fear-conqueror, Superhero, confidant, and yes, angel. For that is truly what you are, doing the work you were meant to do, gracing the world with your powerful presence, saving not just lives, but keeping souls intact for future days. For future days when we get to ring the bell, when we go back into the outside world, outside the warm confines of your realm, outside of the safety of your reach, outside the call of your care, outside of your touch. And yet, you still live inside of us, inside our heads and our hearts, inside of our understanding of what to expect, inside of our sacred circle of how we walk this earth. Inside, we have an angel living there, an angel from the third floor. Hello. My name is Jim Parker, and the title of this poem is Tick Tock, and it is a warning for all of my students out there. Tick Tock, the sound of a clock, at least that's what this OG remembers, but those Tick Tock clocks are passe, gone their own ancient ways, like the sundial, the iPod, and going outside to play. No, today this onomatopoeic suggestion has given way to a brand new foray of expressions, an explosion of misguided internet erosion as you leave a digital footprint that threatens implosion. Every digital decision you make, every feckless photo you take, every reckless on my online mistake is out there now, once you push that button. It follows you like the footsteps of your formal self, 
like volumes of autobiographical decisions tucked on your metaphorical shelf for readers, haters, and beraters to come and check you out. So tick-tock, beware this new clock. Beware and take care as you stare into that black mirror of technological, illogical, ill-conceived decision-making as you are taking missteps that leave prints, digital footprints. It's the tick-tock of your personal clock. Maybe you are YouTubing all over the place. Maybe you are texting garbage out into space, tweeting Instagramming, Snapchatting, tumbling, cram, cram, cramming your face in chatter all over the place. No matter the poison you pick, that digital clock continues to tick because footprints can be followed. And this ain't no Scooby-Doo gang coming at you. No Velma and Fred. And it ain't no he said, she said, he said. No, it's the real deal. It's your old self chasing your new self with all those revealing books sitting right on the shelf for anybody to check you out. Apples are tempting. Go ahead and ask Eve. Computers are awesome. Rest in peace, Steve. But the internet is a tool with its time and its place, a way of connecting with the whole human race, and it often falls short when we want face-to-face. We get to push buttons without emotion, setting drama, hatred, and sorrow into motion. So unless you're in love with the you chasing you, Making decisions someday you might rue, unwittingly seeking derision about all that you do. I have a suggestion on which you might chew. Put down the phone. Turn all of it off. Wait, wait, I can already hear all the scoffs. But think of all you could do with the you that is you if it wasn't always the digital. You, 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 you. Check out some books. Ride around on your bike, pack up a picnic, take a six-mile hike, write a haiku, get up on this stage, paint something beautiful, open up to a new page, add some variety of activity, a bit of strife, so that when the clock stops ticking, you've actually lived a life. Unplug your brain from the box, separate from the system, turn off the screen, come out on the scene of a whole new world waiting to be seen. Look around you, because there is nothing passe about finding your way in this overly technological world of today. Leave less footprints. Leave less of a trail. Look for those ways in this world to prevail. Tick tock. You are on the clock. The moon sits silently, unaware of the power of its own beauty. Suddenly, clouds hide the moon so my eyes don't disrupt its beauty. They guard the moon like the beautiful woman they must protect. Moon peeks through the clouds like a rare jewel. I sit there dazed by its beauty. Something magical happens to me. I feel the connection. I become part of the magic. Thank you to the poets who shared their work with us this year and to all of you for watching. Feeling the itch to try your hand at writing some poetry after watching this event? Registration for this year's virtual poetry workshop will be open until Friday, April 30th. Tracy Lander Garrett walks you through writing poetry for fun with metaphor and nonsense poems.